Great! Moving on. And I start by missing the jump that we accomplished to end the previous clip. Not what I call encouraging, but that's what the fast forward button is for. Right, the water's up, so we're back to where we can try to open that powerless door. Really hoping the thermal visor is gonna be enough to let us go in that direction, otherwise it's gonna get annoying. Right, so it's not enough to let us get through here. So, the super missile was enough to change things up here and let us actually make progress. Wonder why it took me that long to figure that out. Ah, well, we're through that door and didn't have to go through more white aimless wandering to figure out where to go next. I certainly appreciate that, that's for sure. Okay, bit of an interesting danger here. Oh dear, there's no way this room isn't going to involve a boss fight. And the fact that we have a cutscene as we drop proves it. Okay, that's odd. And apparently all those rocks in the center of the room are more than just decoration. In fact, they are the boss. It's nice that this is the kind of universe where I can't find it in me to question the large rock monster that's suddenly trying to kill us. And unlike the big plant boss that was in a previous clip, this one doesn't have anything especially convenient about its environment for us. It is literally just a rock monster in a large section of cave, nothing man-made empowering it that we have to explicitly interact with in order to help destroy it. So, this thing can freeze us, huh? I guess this means that uh, we're gonna be getting the ice beam from this guy. I would have preferred to have gotten it before we first ran into Metroids on this planet, but... Eh. Okay, while the thermal visor is doing a good job of uh, highlighting what we actually need to shoot, it's oddly difficult for me to touch the attacks a big guy is throwing in return, because I'm too focused on that weak point. So we blast its leg and it doesn't fall over. Because of course that supposed leg wasn't actually held in any weight at all. Oh, come on. Why were we hurt by moving that close to the big rolling rock? We were certainly in a spot that would avoid us being in any way crushed by it. Ugh, I'm sorry, but I have to call bullshit on this thing's hitbox. And this is the only time in uh, any Metroid game where I feel like I need to complain about an outright hitbox. Eh, Nintendo is generally pretty damn good about uh, most gameplay related issues like that.
Okay, it's literally impossible to strafe away from the damn thing when it's rolling like that, because strafing required us to be locked onto something. And the morph ball isn't good for dodging since the camera isn't under our control, so we might just roll right into the damn thing. I wouldn't consider this an especially difficult fight, especially if you've grabbed a good number of energy tanks before now. Still, it's literally a slugging match with a massive rock monster, where you don't really have any choice but to take some of these hits considering our mobility and his hitboxes. I'm sure that part of that has to do with me just not being especially skilled at the game, but it's hard to become an ace when the game as a whole is rather forgiving of mistakes. I can't help feeling this isn't a fun fight though. Watch that ice attack! At least when we don't have the thermal visor in this fight, it's more visually striking to look at. Unfortunately, for big stretches of the fight, we have to use the thermal visor because that's part of the whole gimmick of this fight. Or somehow destroying rocks that look completely normal somehow sets off our thermal visor in a way that blinds us. Some grindingly long fights can be fun, but this isn't one of them. We didn't even see the big guy on screen. How the hell did I take damage there? Kind of tempted to fast forward if only because of how slowly his health bar is going down. I'm sure there are a number of Let's Players and speedrunners who could take this guy down in this amount of time, but I suppose it makes sense that a massive rock is slowing me down like this. Give us the next section of you to shoot at. Okay, I guess we've managed to hurt him since he took so long to scream in agony in that specific moment. I would have thought we'd get something like that for reaching uh, the halfway of point or even just a quarter left in his health, but because that felt a little early to me. As far as I can see, his attack pattern hasn't changed, but then part of the time we're explicitly blind here. So we did something to give us less visibility outside of the thermal visor, when keeping an eye on the big guy was already an issue when our thermal visor completely ignores the mist. As I mentioned, this fight just doesn't feel like it, it was all that well thought out to me. It's not difficult to know what he's going to do next, or how to inflict damage. It just takes a while to bring him down for good, and a few of his attacks just feel annoyingly tricky to avoid in return, especially when you can't properly see them. That's another piece of him broken off, and his health registers at about the halfway point.
just how much of this fight have we spent being effectively blind? And now I'm having a hard time reading the health bar since the color of the bar is the same as the air behind it. If it's not one thing, it's another in this fight, isn't it? Seriously, a fight that focuses so much on visual modes should not make me feel like we can't see enough of what's going on during it. Why does the game feel the need to keep sending that text message thing we can't see when I damn well can notice that we can't see because of that spark of heat? This far into the game, I think we should be beyond the point where we need to be given that kind of tutorial message to tell us the obvious things that are going on. Again, one of the first things I did in this game was turn off the hint system. But it feels like even this many clips into the game, they want to treat me with kid gloves if this fight wasn't taken so damn long, then I might have felt more insulted, but considering how long it's taking compared to everything else we've gone through so far, I can't help feeling that, yeah, the insult is warranted, and I feel like an idiot. Well, the big guy is removing the mist in the air, I suppose that's nice. But it's not like it was that much of an impediment, considering all my other problems here. Hopefully this is the last section we're gonna have to break. Again and again, he does the same things. And while the plant monster was also rather predictable, this is just annoying, since the fight has gone on for most of this clip. Eh, definitely not making me feel confident for when we reach Metroid Prime 2. That game is most definitely more difficult than this one, and I certainly remember dying more often in it. But we are still technically having trouble in this fight. Really? He just had to blind us as he was rolling right into us? Oh, come on, just let this fight end! Great, I'm having Pokemon flashbacks. Specifically flashbacks to a game I haven't gotten around to commenting on just yet. I refuse to lose this close to the end because the damn rock decides to keep spanning roll out at us. And that does it. The rock has finally been taken down. Okay, why did Samus seem to move as if she was an escaping an explosion when the big guy didn't dramatically blow up? And while I'm pretty sure that final rock smacking us in the head was supposed to be funny, all I could muster at the time was a bit of a groan. Okay, was wrong about getting the ice beam, but I suppose this opens up a lot more areas for us. Part of me can't help feeling annoyed that the spider ball isn't quite as capable as it was in AM2R, but at least it's not as arbitrarily blocked as it was in the 3DS game. Oh, 
Okay, so even with the spider ball, we wouldn't be able to reach that particular cliff there. And I do not see why some of these tracks on the wall don't go all the way to the circle at the top. Okay, so we can use bombs to slightly raise ourselves when on these spider tracks. Still doesn't explain the odd interrupts with uh, some of these tracks in here, though. Now that looks like the way forward. Either we're actually going back the way we came from, or they have the exact same bombing barrier as the other path. This is a fresh path that we hadn't gone through before. Well, since that spider track leads to an ice door and we still don't have an ice beam, let's just go down the elevator for now. Well, after that long fight, I hope nobody minds that I give myself a break here. 